Hey guys, so last week I did some videos on carry conceal options for women and this week what I really wanted to address was moms in particular because I'm a mom and the reason we brought firearms into our home was because I was pregnant and we felt strongly that we wanted to be able to, pr to protect our family. And before I go any further, I want to say classes are amazing. There are so many classes out there that you can take that the NRA, NRA put up for a very reasonable price that allow you to go into a classroom and understand safety measures for your firearm and um, allow you to understand how your holster should fit, allow you to understand what different firearms do and also give you range time so that you have practical application for your firearm. Mothers are in a particularly touchy situation when it comes to firearms, uh, as far as carrying them. Children are very curious and they are persistent. And so I'm going to walk you through the way that I carry concealed or even open carry or even have firearms in my home because on top of having children, I have ho children at home all the time because I homeschool. So I'm going to start out with safety in our home first. Our ammunition for our firearms is stored separately from our firearms. We have a, a wall mounted safe for rifles and, and other long, you know, 22 smaller, smaller firearms too. And it's locked. Our children are only allowed to touch those firearms when they are practicing with their father or on the range and they are not allowed to use handguns at all. The difference that I feel is, is the safety ramification there is that with a, a, a 22, let's see, how long would a 22 be? About this long. You have a very wide arc that that gun has to, to go in before it can point at something close to it or far away, which means that if your child is at the range and they get distracted and they go to turn, they have a very long ways that they could turn before that firearm would be pointing at the person standing next to them, which gives a parent a very long time to be able to reach down and readjust the trajectory, trajectory of that potential bullet, if there's a bullet in it. With Kaya, she has a single shot 1022. And um, the reason for that is that her attention span is quite short. Um, once she has fired that uh, 1022, if she decides to turn and that gun goes with her, she's already used the one bullet that she has, so the odds of an accident are slim. Paige has multi-shot uh, magazine for her 1022, and that's because she has shown that she has a little better attention span. Um, I, I still feel like for young children, a single shot is the safest. When we are on the firing range, we have one parent behind each child and we stay very focused on that and if they do something incorrect safety wise we explain to them what they did we allow them to try again and we keep practicing until they get it right and we try to keep the sessions short so that they're not getting burned out and tired because on, on a on a gun range you do not want your children getting up and wandering around because even though you may know the rules of a firing range the other people that are using the range might not, and if there's an accident, you don't want your child to pay that price because you were not focusing on them, and with a very young child, they could even run down range. They could go from where you're taking care of them, teaching them how to shoot, to running down range when people are still shooting. So it's all about parental responsibility when it comes to firearms. Secondly, when I carry on myself, I do not carry one in the chamber if it is not physically in a holster on my person. When I carried in a purse holster, um, I didn't go buy a special purse holster. I just had a purse that had three pockets and one of those pockets, my gun fit in it very snugly. And the thing about carrying a purse holster is that you must remember that nothing else goes in that pocket with your firearm. You don't want a pencil. You don't want extra ammunition. You, you don't want an extra, um, uh, an extra magazine. You want nothing in that pocket with that firearm and you want it to be in the position so that you can pull it out quickly without um, having too much space around that firearm 
for you to be reaching around and trying to find it because it's not in a holster. There is no trigger guard. You could shoot yourself if you have it chambered. And for that reason, when I carry it in a purse, I never carry it chambered. Because for one thing, if I put that purse down somewhere, a child or even an adult could get into that purse and not knowing how to use it, they could shoot someone because it was already chambered. You wouldn't have to, if, if it's not chambered, you have to pull that out and rack it quickly and take the safety off in order to be able to fire. It does slow you down, but it does prevent any accidental fire, uh, ac I wanted to talk about was what kind of gun to carry on your person when you have children and my belief is that you should never carry a revolver if you have small children the reason being that it is very simple to load a revolver it's it's very straightforward it's very simple it doesn't take much there's no coordination strength combination required in order to load that firearm whereas with an automatic sorry I have to hold it the other way <laughs> With an automatic, you have to rack it first. And it takes a lot of energy, effort. It makes a noise so you could hear it. In order for it to be done correctly, you would hear it. It would give you an alert that somebody was in with your firearm, especially a child. Otherwise, it's just a useless tool. If it doesn't have a, a bullet in it, in the chamber, it's just a useless tool. You could throw it at somebody and hurt, it, hurt them, but they, you couldn't actually shoot anything. is a px4 storm it's a nine millimeter and i i will show you it's not there's no bullet in the chamber this space in here that's the chamber it's where the the bullet fits about right here prepared to be fired and the chamber is what directs the bullet to a target if you didn't have the chamber a bullet would not be a projectile. It, it could ex it could blow up if, if the primer got hit, but it wouldn't actually go anywhere. Again, always keep your finger off the trigger, okay? It would be very difficult for this gun to go off unless you pull the trigger and then it would have to be chambered first and you would have to have the safety off. Now, reaching into a purse, if you're reaching around too much, rooting around inside that purse, you could accidentally touch the trigger and you could pull it as you're pulling it out. And so um, that's why I'm not necessarily a huge fan of purse carrying. But however, the, the, okay. the difficulty with carrying in a holster is that on women, it does not conceal particularly easily. Um, this is my holster. It's an underneath the waistband holster. These clips hook onto my belt and it holds it very securely to my body. And I like that, but I don't like how it looks. The silhouette is not very attractive. And for women, that's really important. To ignore that part of it would be silly. To be like, well, women should just not care what they look like. And it's like, well, women do care what they look like. And so, um, an outside the waistband holster, I don't feel that it holds the firearm as securely to my body. Um, the one that I had would allow the firearm to move a few inches away at the top. And I felt like it was kind of wobbly. As far as the underneath the bra ones, the flashbang holster where you rip it out from underneath your bra, that one is also very floppy. I don't think I would be comfortable with a firearm pointing towards my internal organs or even to my chest when I'm trying to pull it out does not seem like a big deal, but trying to reholster it when it is chambered would make me extremely nervous. Um, there are also garter holsters, which to my mind, they don't work well on my body because they create a bulge above and below the garter part of it. And so underneath the skirt, you could see it. And also it would, I would imagine that it would ca cause chafing between your thighs if you wore a garter holster. Um, the, I had the same problem with an arm with a shoulder holster was that my arm would rub against the holster quite a bit. And, um, in the summer it was difficult to wear enough layers to keep it concealed. Let's see what else are there. Uh, with an ankle holster, if you're carrying 
a full magazine in that ankle holster, it can be very heavy and your chiropractor will not thank you for having an ankle holster because it will, even though it's not a terribly large firearm, if it's a very small firearm, it is still a weight difference on that one leg and it can cause problems with the alignment of your spine because of the way you walk when you wear it. And so for all, and, and then there's appendix carry, which again, I don't like to be pointing at any part of my internal organs or body when I'm carrying a firearm. A holster that, that sits on the outside of your thigh, it looks like a combat holster. Uh, you'd have to be wearing a duster or something to be able to conceal it and it would print very badly. So for me, what works really well is an inside the waistband um, holster. And this is not a retention holster. A retention holster is one where you have to jerk in a specific direction quite forcefully in order to get it out because it locks the gun into the holster. This one retains the holster nicely, but it is not a retention holster. It's just stiff. It holds the firearm in place. It's very secure. And also because it's inside your pants and, in, and held on by a belt, it, that also helps to hold the firearm in. Um, this one is made by Alien Gear and I really like it. Um, that being said, it still does print. It You can almost always see it through my clothes and I never feel like I have as nice a silhouette with it, but um, the safety of having a firearm in a holster is not to be um, taken lightly. Firearm, I've already shown you that it's unloaded. Now, let's see. Okay, this is my firearm inside of the holster. Okay, the most crucial safety point that I can stress is that trigger is covered. There's no way to get your finger in to touch that trigger. And so I did a video previously about how to go to the bathroom in a public restroom without showing people your gun. Now, a lot of people wrote back and said, well, I just take my firearm off and I put it on something when I'm in the bathroom. And if that is your choice, then I'm not going to criticize you on that. For me personally, if I have a small child with me in a, in a bathroom, the minute that I take this firearm out, I am exposing that trigger. which means that somebody's finger could get in that trigger and pull that trigger. And so if I, if I don't have it chambered and I have the safety on, which you wouldn't need to have the safety on if you don't have it in the chamber, but it's good practice again for your subconscious mind to know to always put that safety on. But the safety wouldn't pop up if it wasn't chambered anyway. So that's a moot point. So if I have this firearm chambered, it stays on my person. I do not remove it from the holster ever. Crucial. If this firearm is chambered, if it's loaded and chambered, it stays on my person. I do not remove it. It doesn't. And, and if I don't have children with me in the bathroom, it's just as crucial to me. I do not want someone to get a hold of my firearm. I do not want to be confused about where if I if there was some situation for some reason in the bathroom that I needed to that there was an alarm or something and I for some reason I needed my firearm. I wouldn't want to have to be looking around for it. I want to know where it is at all times. If it's chambered, it is very serious that you maintain control of that firearm. And especially so if you have children because moms, you know, there are so many times when you go into the into the bathroom and you have children with you in the stall. Now, the safety ramifications of carrying one in the chamber when you have small children is that you teach the children early not to touch firearms. We started very early with the kids, allowing them to touch the 1022s when they were supervised in a supervised environment where we were very clear about what the rules were because we didn't want it to be a curiosity thing where they wanted to touch it because they were never allowed to touch it. So we did allow them to touch those and we are very specific about when the firearms are at home and they're chambered, they are in a safe. And 
I think you would want to be very careful that your children never let you see that code being entered into the safe, especially if, if you have older children that have friends come over. Maybe your kids wouldn't be the um, liability there, but if if you have kids with friends that come over, that has been my biggest concern as far as a parent goes with firearms in the home. It's It hasn't been for my own children respecting guns. It's that when I've had friends of my children over, I don't know what they have been taught about firearms. And so I am liable for something that happens to that child in my home. And thus I'm extremely careful with how we deal with firearms when they're not on our person. As far as accidents that you hear about with people being shot accidentally by their own children when they're carrying concealed, um, that would have a lot to do, I think, with the not only with the training of the child, but of where you carry it and how you carry it. It's only been recently that I started carrying one in the chamber, and that is because of the age of my children. They are old enough now that they really understand firearms, they understand there's something to be respected, and that they're sometimes frightening because of what they can do. They have seen animals butchered and with firearms and they recognize that there's damage caused to living tissue by bullets. And so I, I feel confident now about carrying one in the chamber. That being said, you cannot let someone else's comfort level dictate to you how you carry. My husband carried in the chamber for, for a lot of years and was always pressuring me to carry in the chamber. But I was the one that was home with small children and I never felt comfortable with that and so I didn't. I carried my firearm loaded but not chambered which means that a magazine full of bullets was in the firearm but I had not racked the slide to put a, a bullet into the chamber. And so my belief is that taking classes, getting familiar with firearms before you ever have one in your home is the best way to ensure that your family will be safe. Take the classes, go to the range frequently. Some of the most fun that we had when we were first married was going to the range and entering into the shooting competitions. They were super fun and a, just a, a fun family thing if you have kids old enough that they can wear hearing protection. That's the only thing is when you have really little kids, the firing range is probably not the best place for them just because a lot of the hearing protection doesn't fit them very well. I believe that being it, it's it's an essential part of a woman's education to be able to defend herself and her family. It's one thing if your husband knows how to use your firearms, but if he's not home when you have need of them, they don't do you much good. And the other thing is your husband might not actually be practicing safe techniques. Um, just because he loves guns doesn't mean that he actually knows how to use them correctly or how to use them safely. In our state, you can get a carry conceal permit with just hunter safety, which doesn't even really walk you through using handguns. It's just about how to be safe in a hunting experience and, and really basic knowledge about firearms. So uh, again, I, I push it pretty strongly. Make sure that you're educated about it because then if you're in a situation with firearms where there's someone in your home or in your family that carries, that if they start to exhibit unsafe practices, you can alert them to it. And if they continue to exhibit dangerous tendencies, you can remove yourself from the home and take your children to a safe place. I have a couple of different friends that we had to stop being friends because their boyfriends or husbands were negligent in the way that they carried and it was not a safe situation and we just had to stop being friends with them because it's not worth it. It's not worth it to just say, oh, it's not a big deal. He knows what he's doing. He's been in military or he's been a police officer or he's been hunting all his life or he's been carrying concealed for years. By educating yourself about what safe practice is, you can decide whether or not you feel safe around the people that you know that carry concealed or carry open in any way.